So the easiest way to, to do it is just to jump into it. Let's take a look at the number 7.32. And what we want to really do is we want to round this guy to the nearest tenth. To the nearest tenth. So this is a, a, a major uh, difference than the last lesson. Again, before we were only looking at the whole number going up to eight or going down to seven. Here we're actually rounding it to the nearest uh, tenth, which means we're rounding to this position. So really I want you to put a little arrow under here. This is the number we're rounding to. And so what's going to happen is that this is going to either going to go up to a four or it's going to stay down at a three. And in order to figure out what to do, we're going to go over here to the tiebreaker. So to handle it, let's go ahead and rewrite the number here, 7.32, and we're rounding to this position. So what we want to do is we're going to either round up where the number here stays the same, and then the number three can go to the next number higher. It'll be 3.40, uh, I'll tell you about the zero here in just a second, or it's going to go down to uh, 7.30. Three, zero. These are our two choices. Now I put the zeros in here so we'd have the same number of digits as our original problem, but just remember that with decimals, when you have a trailing zero beyond a decimal point, the zero doesn't matter at all. It has no impact to the value of the number. So here in the beginning, I'll put a zero here just to kind of keep the digits the, the same, or then the same number of digits, but really we're rounding either up to 7.4 or rounding down to 7.3. Having the zero at the end really doesn't uh, isn't necessary for, for, for these problems. Now, in order to decide what to do, we follow the same rule. We take a look at the next door digit. In this case, it's a two. This two, of course, is less than five. Remember, four, three, two, one, or zero, which means we round down. And so the answer is 7.30, or you could just say the answer is 7.3, because the answer of 7.3 is exactly the same thing as the answer 7.30. All right, let's take a look at problem number two. Let's say we're going to round the number 5.63 and we're going to round this guy to the nearest tenth. So I'll put tenth uh, right here. So what I'd like you to do first is identify where the tenths position is. Remember tenths comes right after the decimal point so we're going to round to this position right here and that means our choices are either to go up to a seven which would be 5.7 or to go down to, to say where we're at, 5.6. Now, if you want to put 5.70 here and 5.60 here, that's fine. Either way is okay with me. You don't have to have the trailing zero here like I did in the previous problems. Now, going up to seven or staying down at six, how do we decide? We look next door, we have a three. Of course, that's less than five, which means we round down to the answer of 5.6. All right, let's take a look at the next problem. We're going to round this to the nearest hundredth. So the way you write that is hundred and put th hundredth like this. And the number is 6.447. So the first step is to figure out where is the hundredth position. So here's the whole number. Here's the tenths position. The next one here is the hundredths position. So put a little arrow under that. That means that we can either go up to 6.447 four, five, just make this one higher, or we could stay down here at 6.44. Again, it's totally fine. You can put a tra to keep the same number of digits, you could say 6.450 or stay down at 6.440. I mean, that's the, 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 same, the same exact meaning. So, you know, either put the zeros here or don't, it's fine with me either way. Now, how do you determine what to do? You take a look at the next door digit, which is a seven. Of course, that's larger than five. So the answer we're going to put is 6.45 or 6.450, however you want to write it. All right, next problem. Let's take a look at rounding the next digit to again the nearest hundred. So I'll write it down again, hundred. TH, hundredth. And the number we're rounding is uh, 4.484. All right, and either we're going to round this guy to the nearest hundredth. So what do we do here? Here's a four. Uh, in the one in the uh, whole number position, then we have tenths, then we have hundredths. So let's go ahead and put an arrow here in the hundredths position. So that means we can either round this guy up to 4.49 or because it goes up to a nine because this was an eight. It either goes up to a nine or it stays down at an eight. 4.48. 4 
You can put the zeros there if you like, either way, but the number that we're rounding to is either going to go up a notch or it's going to stay down where it's at. How do we decide? Look next door, next door which is less than 5, which means we stay down at 4.48. Alright, next problem. We're going to round this guy to the nearest tenth. And the number we're going to round is 4.26. So obviously the first thing you need to do is figure out where is the tenths position. It comes right beyond the decimal. Here is the tenths position. So that means if we round this number up, we're going to land on 4.3 because we go up 1 to round up, or we'll round down by staying on 4.2. So again, you can write it just like that, that's fine, or you can say you're going up to 4.30 or down to 4.20. It's the same meaning. Putting a zero at the end after a decimal point doesn't change anything. How do we decide? Take a look to the right, we have a 6, which of course is greater than 5, which means we round up to 4.3, or you can call it 4.30. Alright, that was the halfway mark, uh, so we're making good progress here. Let's take a look and round this guy to the nearest hundred. I'm going to put hund right here for hundred. Ah, let's go ahead and do the whole thing, like this. Alright, the number is what? 2.212. So firstly, what, where is the hundredths position? Here's the whole number, here's the tenths, here's the hundredths. So there you go, there's the hundredths position. So that means you're either going to round this guy up to 2.21, uh, I'm sorry, 2.22, because we increase this guy, or we go down to 2.21 to stay down with the same number. So either keep it the same or go up. Of course, you could put zeros here to have the same number of digits going up to 2.220 or 2.210. Either way is fine with me. To decide what to do, look next door. It's a 2. Of course, that's way less than 5, so we're rounding down to 2.21. Or you can write it as 2.210. Alright, just a couple more problems. Let's round this guy to the nearest tenth. And we're going to round 0.1 to the nearest tenth. First of all, where is the tenths place? It's right here. The one here is the tenths. So that can either go up or it can stay the same. So we round up to 0 0.2, that's how we go up one here, or we round down 0 0.1. You can put those zeros at the end if you want to have the same number of digits, it's fine with me either way. What do we decide to do? Look next door. We have a 3, which of course is less than 5, which means we round down to 0 0.1. All right, only three more problems. Let's take a look and round this guy to the nearest hundredth. And we're going to round the number 4.397 to the nearest hundredth. Here's the tenths place, here's the hundredths place, so we put a little arrow here. Now here we have to think a little bit because if we round up, where are we going to go? Here you have a 4, here we have a 3, but what's going to happen if we round if we go up one? You know, it looks like we have 4.3 something, but really, if you kind of zoom out and look at it, this is 4.397. If we roll this over to the next higher number, it becomes a zero and this becomes a four. So really, we're rolling over to the point where what we would have here is 4.40. Think of it like this: here's 39. If we go up one notch, it's going to go up to 40 after the decimal. Or if we round down, we will stay down here at 4.39. And I'm okay if you drop that extra zero in to have the extra digits. So we're going either up to 4.400 or we're staying down at 4.390. Alright, so what is going to be the answer? Take a look next door. We have a 7. That's of course larger than 5, so we round up to 4.400 uh, zero, zero, or you can write it as 4.40, or you can just write it as 4.4. These zeros that we have here, they don't change anything. So you can drop them from the number 4.400 zero, zero is the same as 4.40, which is also the same as just 4.4. None of those digits actually do anything. We drop them there and leave them there to help us with rounding, but they don't really do anything. Alright, two more problems. Let's take a look to the nearest tenth. And we're rounding the number 5.29. Alright, firstly, let's figure out where the tenths position is. Here we go. Uh, right there beyond the decimal. And so that means we're going to round up to possibly 5. Point, what would happen if we go up one here? It would be 
or we round down and stay at 5.2. All right, so what did we actually do? Well, we look next door, we have a nine. This is, of course, larger than five. That means we round up to 5.3. All right, and here is our very last problem of this lesson. We'll round this guy to the nearest hundredth. All right, what do we have? 0 0.155. And we have to identify where is the hundredths position. Here's the tenths, here is the hundredth, so with a little arrow right there. And that means if we round up, it can go to 0 0.1, going up here to 1.6, or it can stay down at 0 0.15, staying where it is. And what do we do? We look next door. We have a 5 next door. Remember, 5 is a tiebreaker. If you see a 5 next door, you still round it up to 0 0.16. And that's the final answer. So here we have conquered the idea of rounding decimals. Uh, and we notice we have rounded, in this case, to the nearest tenth or to the nearest hundredth. Uh, if we round to the nearest tenth, we need to look in the hundredths position to figure out what to do. If we're rounding to the nearest hundredth, we have to look to the next position over, which is the thousandths place, to figure out what to do. But these numbers I'm kind of keeping in the you know to the size, but you can have many more decimals beyond many more digits beyond the decimal. You can round to any position you want, but no matter where you're rounding to, in order to figure out what to do, you're always going to look one position to the right to determine if you go up or if you go down. So I'd like you to solve all of these yourself when you feel like you're getting the right answers. Follow me on to the last lesson. We'll conquer and conclude the idea of rounding decimals. Learn anything at mathandscience.com.